Color e-ink seems to be the holy grail of e-readers. A lot has happened recently with Color e-ink, but you might be surprised to know that Color e-ink is actually celebrating its 10-year anniversary. Longer, in fact. Don't believe us? Well, sit back, relax, and let's take a look back of the last 10 years of Color e-ink. <laughs> Everyone seems to be very aware of what's been happening in the past 12 months when it comes to color e-ink over here. But what if we told you that it actually started way back here in 2009? Yes, around the time when the Kindle DX was being released, there was a device in 2009 by Fujitsu named the Flepia. The Fujitsu Flepia was an 8-inch color e-reader with 1014 by 768 pixels, had Bluetooth and SD cards, stereo speakers, and it was readily available. It also said it had 260,000 colors, but 4,096 was more believable. The problem was that it was $1,000 American when it came out, and this was 11 years ago. This was achieved by reflecting light off of the screen. This wasn't using Triton or any other recent technology. The major problems was that it was really expensive, it was too new, and it was just too niche. In fact, e-readers themselves are already niche, add color on top of that, and your clientele is really small, especially around the time when e-readers were just getting going. It didn't sell very well and it didn't sell outside of Japan at all, and you could buy a Kindle DX with a bigger screen for one third the cost. Nothing at all happened with the Flepia after that. In 2010, Fujitsu made color e-paper for hospital registration systems, and then again in 2011 they made a Colesteric LCD digital paper, but it wasn't e-ink, it was actually just an LCD panel. Fujitsu wouldn't actually have their hand in mainstream consumer level e-ink in any capacity for the next decade. In 2019, they made the Quaderno, but it was basically based off of 2016 hardware by Sony. And it wasn't in color, it was just black and white. No glow lights, no advancements with the color technology they'd used a decade before. The Fujitsu Flepia was seen nothing more than a domestic product that never really reached outside of Japan, but the Hanvon did. In 2010, the Hanvon, or Hanwang, was a 9.7 inch 16 by 1200 e-reader that was running e-ink Triton. Because this was running Triton, this is the technology that will pave the way for the next couple years. This is seen as the first color e-reader ever released. The device itself for the time was fantastic, 800 megahertz processor, microphone input, SD cards, stereo speakers, and 4096 colors, along with EMR, which is electromagnetic resonance, which basically means you could use a stylus with it, and it was only $440 USD. You might be asking, what is e-ink Triton? Well, e-ink Triton is pretty much regular e-ink with a thin transparent color filter laid over it called a color filter array. It has four sub-pixels, red, green, blue, and white. That color filter array reflects natural light, so it's very similar to looking at a piece of paper with color on it. It didn't have any need for glow light in its current stage. The device itself was at trade shows all around the world and was an overall success, and it actually paved the way for what happened in 2011. Ektaco made the Jetbook Color, 
using the Han Von device as its base, basically a white labeled device. It was that same 9.7 inch 16x1200 speakers, SD, etc. It featured talking dictionaries, periodic table, calculators, etc. Ictaco has really put an emphasis on international language translation. They even make specific devices that do nothing but translation. This was seen as the first international mainstream release of a color device, and it actually spawned a sequel in 2012. The Jetbook Color 2 in the following year featured the same device as the first one and the Hanvon, but the device itself was upgraded. Lots of new languages, text-to-speech, scribbling, and a cross-translator of over 180 languages. New file supports, UI optimization, they added more file supports for documents, interface languages are up to now 15 different languages, and improved stability of the keyboard formatting and other menu features. This sold for about $450 on their website, and you can still find this on eBay and other secondary markets. The biggest thing about this device is that it was using E-Ink Triton 2, which is the second generation of the current color technology. It featured a thinner stack, more light, more saturation, the ability to have a front light, and rectangular pixels rather than square pixels. This offered more color, more vibrancy, and it overall looked a little bit better. But when you see pictures and videos of people putting the Jetbook Color 1 versus the 2, they look almost identical to each other. In fact, no one can really tell them apart. The backgrounds are grey and the colors just look washed out. This was pretty much the downfall of the first wave of color. In 2013, a major e-reader manufacturer picked up the color technology and made a device their own. This wasn't a rebrand of the Hanvon, it was their own device, Pocketbook. Pocketbook has been making devices since 2007 and are still very well alive today. In 2013, they made the Color Lux. It was an 8 inch device, 800 by 600, 4096 colors. The device itself didn't have any speakers, but it was really nice to see a major manufacturer at the time pick up the color technology and make something their own rather than white labeling something. This device didn't last long, it sold for $300, and the device itself was was pretty unimpressive. The colors again are a little bit washed out which was the inherent problem with this wave of color and it just didn't really do anything groundbreaking other than have the color screen on there. But the biggest takeaway of this was that it was only $300 US and if you've seen earlier on this started at around a thousand so the price was coming down with each iteration of color devices. The price was compelling and it was from a company with a very good track record and a very good international presence, but that's where it ended. Nothing really came of the Color Lux, and in the coming years, nothing came of anything. Up until now, between 2009 and 2013, something has happened in the Color E-Ink world at least once a year for the past five years. 2014 brought nothing. 2015 rolled around it brought nothing. 2016, something happened. No devices were actually released, but at trade shows around the world at E-Ink's booth, they released something. Advanced Color E-Paper. It had 150 ppi with a resolution of 2500 by 1600, but it wasn't what we were used to seeing. It was a 20 inch slate panel used for advertisements and basically posters. It was stunning and it was a different quality than LCD LED. People were intrigued, but they said that it's going to be at least two years before anything happens with this technology. In 2017, again, nothing happened. In 2018, just like clockwork, and exactly two years after they said it would, E-Ink started shipping the panels. E-Ink president Johnson Lee told us at Goody Reader, since e-readers are not our focus on this product line, we're not announcing a date to expect it. So again, no consumer available color e-ink was released for that year. Something did happen though. SES and Magatag picked up digital signage. It came in a variety of sizes and shapes, everything from 1.6 inches all the way up to 12.2. Wasn't what you thought it was though. It was exactly that, digital signage. 
we ourselves had samples of these and we tried to see if we could use them in any other way, but no, they are a single purpose passive device. They are there to be signage. They came in a variety of colors. They displayed more than one color on the screen. They looked good. They felt good. They're built very well, but they were exactly that. Tons of companies, however, picked up on this. Everything from electronic stores, cell phone shops, and even supermarkets started picking it up for display purposes. But 2018 was the first time in five years we saw any real progress with color e-ink technology. The following year in 2019, something amazing happened. We ourselves got invited to Connected Ink in Tokyo, Japan. There, we saw something incredible. It was e-ink's advanced color e-paper in a 10.3 inch shell at 4096 colors with a Wacom pen. This was the first time we've seen color e-ink in its consumer form in six years. We hadn't seen anything except a couple concept prototypes, digital signage, and 20 inch panels from some trade shows. This showed progress, and this was getting everyone excited. And this paved the way for 2020, where everything would change. March 23rd, 2020, iReader sent out an announcement that they told us we could use on our YouTube channel. It was the iReader C6. Less than a month later, on April 7th, they sent us our review sample, and it was here. Almost seven years went by, and we're finally at the second generation of color devices. This had Android 7, a 2000 milliamp battery, 1448 by 1072 with 300 PPI. It had Bluetooth and USB-C. It also had a speed mode called A2 mode that a lot of devices have used up until this point. It also did away with the near decade old Triton technology and moved on to the more advanced Kaleido e-ink technology. It uses a plastic filter instead of the glass filter like the older generation, and instead of using squares or rectangles, it uses hexagons. This gave it more versatility to just look overall a lot better than the older technology, and it didn't look as washed out. In fact, it was fairly vibrant. Now there were some shortcomings. This device was in Chinese only, and if you could get past the language barrier, that still didn't do much because it was absolutely locked into the Baidu ecosystem in China. They didn't even allow you to type in any other URL or website to go to anything else but direct hyperlinks to whatever they allowed you to visit. Also, despite the fact that it was running Android, you couldn't sideload anything into this device. It was made for the Chinese market, and the Chinese market only. Another one of its shortcomings, if you've seen our videos, is that it was very blue. And it's true, when you turned the light on, the screen didn't illuminate a nice pale white. It was actually overexposed and a little bit blue. You didn't have a warm light either, so you couldn't counteract this. And with the light off, everything looked kind of grey. How would this affect the other confirmed and rumored companies who are going to be using this technology moving forward? Well, the next device was right around the corner. Surprisingly, the next device to come out wasn't even an e-reader. In May 21st of 2020, the A5C came out by Hisense. Hisense is known for its TVs and other electronic consumer products. This was an e-ink smartphone, and it was running color. It had a 5.84 inch screen, 4096 colors, 4000 milliamp battery, it had everything a smartphone had, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, SIM card, SD cards, but it didn't have a speaker on it. The speaker shared within the earpiece, which was really quiet and actually blared into your ears if you were on the phone and got a notification. This was the first time we were able to run APK files on a color e-ink device. It was also the first color e-ink smartphone ever made. It had micro USB because it was based off of the A5, which was an e-ink smartphone that was made back in 2019 by Hisense. Because it was a smartphone, naturally it had a glass screen and it didn't really look that great because it was super reflective and there were so many layers of things in between your eyes and the actual viewable surface, you needed the glow light on to be able to see anything. And when you did, 
It didn't look all that great, and it was a little blue, which was the inherent problem with this wave of color e-ink. But having the ability to load in your own APK files means that this was the first device to allow you to install Kindle, Kobo, Facebook, Instagram, and basically any other APK file you wanted. It sold for around the $300 price point, and it was readily available to be shipped anywhere in the world, making this a very international friendly device that anyone could use. Less than a month later, in June 14th, 2020, the A5C was cannibalized by its own device, the A5 Pro CC. This was the exact same thing, octa-core processor, USB-C, dual SIM, dedicated speaker, two microphones, fingerprint unlock, and it was around the same price. It also had better colors, it was more vibrant, it was faster, it looked better, and the colors really popped. It wasn't as washed out and dull as the previous generation, and it was just overall a more capable device. A device that some people switched over to as their primary. Color e-ink for this recent generation, Kaleido, was on a roll. One month later, in July 28th, the Pocketbook Color was released. This was a 300 ppi, 1448 by 1072, 16 LED e-reader running color. It had two less layers than the A5C and the A5 Pro CC, getting rid of the screen protector and the glass capacitive layer. It had one gigahertz of processor, one gigahertz of RAM, and 16 gigabytes of internal storage. It also had Bluetooth and SD. It was going back to the iReader C6 with the exposed sunken screen without a flush screen and bezel design. Although the screen was groundbreaking because it's using Kaleido on the Pocketbook lineup, which has existed for 13 years at this point, the device itself was overall unchanged from their current lineup. You couldn't install apps because it's not running Android. You couldn't speed it up because it doesn't really have X mode. You can't watch videos and it's overall just stuck with the applications you have like Klondike, Chess, etc. Except it did have something kind of interesting. We understand that it did not have EMR or electromagnetic resonance or a Wacom layer for a standard stylus to work on, but this is the first time ever we've seen color note taking on a consumer available product. Not only that, Pocketbook is really strong on international language support. So not only did this come in English, but tens of other languages from across the globe. They already had the infrastructure and logistics network of being able to ship this anywhere in the world without any hindrances or stock shortages. This also didn't lock you into any weird ecosystem and you could browse the web freely. The Pocketbook Color did color and they did it well. We've had four color devices come out in less than half a year and it wasn't over yet. Surprise, surprise to many people, ourselves included, a Chinese company called iFlyTech was ready to play ball. And on August 21st of that same year, they released the iFlyTech C1 color e-reader. This thing was a flush screen and bezel made with really high quality materials, USB-C, and a Migu ecosystem. Much like the Kindle X Migu, where you could toggle between the Migu ecosystem or the Kindle ecosystem, this was much the same. You could actually switch between the two anytime you wanted. Now there were a lot of downsides. Again, this was Chinese only. Again, you were locked into an ecosystem. This time, Migu and WeChat. You couldn't even log into this device and get past the setup process without a mainland China cell phone number. It was overall a little blue when you turned on the glow light, and again you couldn't install your own applications. A few weeks later, iFlyTech released the Red Label version, which refined the overall screen appearance, made the device faster, and came pre-updated with the latest software update. iFlyTech, however, was rather expensive. For a lockdown device that you couldn't really do much with, it was $320, which wasn't appealing at all. When would we see a device that we would be able to use the things we know and love, APK files, Google Play even, one that wasn't locked down, one that didn't have all these restrictions, one that was available? Well, someone had the answer, and that someone 
is Onyx. Onyx was synonymous with releasing a lot of devices throughout the years. They're on their third generation of pretty much everything across the board, and they've released everything from 6-inch readers all the way up to 13.3-inch readers. Onyx's answer to the color market was the Onyx Books Poke 2. This thing had it all. Android 9.0 plus Google Play. The ability to not only change the content, but the entire menu system into an array of languages including English, Russian, German, French, Korean, Japanese, and more. This thing had an octa-core processor, 2GHz, 1448 by 1072 2 gigs of RAM, USB-C with OTG, meaning you can plug in accessories, 4 speed modes, video, wireless audio, and you could actually turn off the color array by going into X mode, making it a black and white e-reader. The Poke 2 color had everything. It wasn't locked down like the other guys in a weird Chinese ecosystem. It was completely open for you to craft it into whatever you wanted it to be. It was using the fastest specs. It was using the biggest screen size available at the time. You were able to play color videos on this device, browse Google Play, and basically, there was no compromise, except one, the stock situation. Companies like Pocketbook, iReader, Hisense, they had a lot of stock of their devices readily available and they shipped everywhere. Unfortunately, Onyx did a couple trial sales, sold their products to all their vendors, gave everyone their allocated amount, and then that's it. The Poke 2 color is going out as quickly as it came in. Even as we speak and as you watch this video, the stock is limited and Onyx said themselves they're not making any more of the Poke 2 colors. What is available is available and after it's sold out, it's gone. It's only $279 and it's available now. If you're lucky enough to pick one up when you're watching this video, pick one up. Trust us, it's great. Color e-ink is one of those things that we all think we need and we really, really want. We don't know if it's necessary yet because we've had two waves of color devices and over eight manufacturers that have made consumer available items for purchase. There was a seven year gap between the first generation of color and this current generation of color. And people really aren't responding the way everyone thought they would when color arrived. Everyone thought it would be the answer. Everyone thought it would look like LCD and LED and give us that fluidity we all searched for. When we first had the color e-ink in our hands this year from iReader C6, we were overjoyed. Then five other devices came out and it remained much the same across all platforms, whether you had a sunken screen and bezel, flush screen and bezel, glass screen, plastic screen. Color didn't wow us as much as we thought it would. But using everything we know and everything we can reference, this was undoubtedly a step in the right direction.